Yeah, it is the beach soccer game, uh, the competition going on in Kebi State. Uh, uh, that is the place I have been hosting all of the um, beach uh, soccer league in Nigeria. And it's, it's been a fantastic one, like this, uh, the likes of Kada Emirates, uh, Kebi beach uh, soccer team. They have been doing well in the league that's for the 2024 season. So it's a good one. Uh, you're just enjoying the highlight of that uh, game in Kebi State. On that note, I will welcome you to Sports Update this evening on Trust TV. I am um, Emmanuel Fashimi. Let's begin with athletic story this evening where the uh, Athletics Federation of Nigeria has actually named a strong squad that will be representing the country at the Bahama, uh, Bahamas uh, release. Uh, and you know, uh, from this release, will also, uh, it will also be used for the Olympic uh, qualifier, that is Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Already we have uh, um, our, some of our athletes who have already qualified uh, the likes of uh, um, uh, Favor Philly and Co have qualified for the uh, track uh, event in Paris. Uh, it's a Brume and Co also. We have uh, Toby Amoson who has already qualified for the 100 meters hurdle. But uh, uh, for the relay team, uh, we still need to at least get the qualification time uh, definitely to, so to enable us qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. So the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, the likes of Toby Amoson, Favor Philly, and uh, Omolara Ogumaki. Jew, who did so well at the African Games uh, 2023 in Ghana, uh, we represent the country at the World Athletics Relays at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium in Nassau, that is in Bahama, between May 4th and 5th, just days away from now, that event uh, uh, will be coming up. And uh, surprisingly, surprisingly, one name was known among the uh, male sprinters, that is Fevo Ashe, who is the fastest man so far this year in the world and then in Nigeria. But we have have the likes of Nathaniel Ezekiel, uh, Akitola, and Co., who will be representing uh, Nigeria. So, for favor, uh, Ophili, uh, um, Toby Amuson, uh, Omolara Ogumakin, they will also be there at the Bahamas uh, release 2024, where we are hoping to get uh, one of the tickets uh, for the Paris 2024 Olympic uh, Games. Uh, I welcome uh, um, Omoni Jeremiah to the show this evening to look at this and other story on the show. Jeremiah, welcome to Sports Update on Trust TV. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you very much for having me. Okay. Um, shockingly, Favour actually was not listed for the male uh, sprinters, uh, but we have notable names, Ezekiel Nathaniel, uh, who just won um, uh, at the African Games. We have uh, Chidi Okeze, who won gold medal in the 400 meters uh, race at the African Games, is also there. But the fastest man this year for Nigeria and even in the world, Favour Ashe, was not listed. Surprisingly, that name is missing. Uh, from the sprinters that will be going to Bahamas uh, between May 4th and uh, 5th? Just the way you said it, uh, surprisingly, it wasn't listed. You know, I think that it's... Um, but I think the reason again is I don't forget that. He, I think earlier, earlier this year, he was actually, there was a case around that speculated that he was arrested for something and like that fraud or something. So I think that's another reason why um he, he must actually be his, his name might have to be omitted from that from that list because of what happened in February and um something relating to his own personal track record as regards his um, character and everything. So I, I think that might be one of the reasons. And also another reason is to give room for other athletes to participate and earn the tickets because I think that, that might be a strong reason. Okay, that might be a strong reason. Jeremiah, let's look at this. If you look at uh, uh, towards the ending, let me see from the mid of uh, last year or from the beginning of last year, despite the uh, some of um, the issues we had, Toby Amuson, with Toby Amuson, the AIU issue, with Toby Amuson in 2022, uh, 2023, after 20, doing so well in 2022, and then last year, beginning from January last year to the middle of uh, 2023, our athletes were not really getting it right, wanting or the other but after that they had to put all of this behind them have we doing so well but if we look at our athletes uh, 
Do you think we can go to the Olympics um, and get a gold medal? The last time we got a gold medal when it comes to the track event was in Atlanta, 1996, and that is Choma Ajunwa. Uh, do you think uh, this time around we are on course and we're on track to actually break that jinx and get a gold medal in the in track event? Okay, I don't know. We have we have a party, you know. Look at okay. We have um, what we'll be able to put through during the Commonwealth, and what we've been doing, what our athletes have been doing individually in their own space, respective is. I think that we have what it takes to really um, challenge powerhouses in the world right now. However, we might still have a little bit glitches, and gold look very, very big for us right now. Like, hey, this might be very, very big because if you look at if you if you come, okay, let's say we compare um, to the emotional strength, which is very, very good right now. That strength might not be the same thing for what you become, what you'll be seeing from other athletes. So I I think right now gold might look very, very big. Something in some in some to to, to achieve, but he, to win medals, other medals, I think is, is achievable for Nigeria. It's very, very achievable for Nigeria. And um, if, we are, if, we are, if we eventually win gold too as well, I think that's also okay. it. has been a it's long overdue when we break the record. Yes, of course, it's long overdue. We need to bring gold, and Toby Amuson is on course uh, to get one of those gold. There's a Brumel favor of Philly, uh, who's doing so well, who's also uh, has um, uh, made some uh, beautiful record this this year, favor Ashe. And let's not forget that uh, um, the, um, the other guys are also coming in, Chidi, Okeze. We have a whole lot of them, Akitola, they really want to make a mark at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. All right, let's uh, leave the tracks uh, uh, right now. Let's go straight to the pant band uh, sports. Let's talk about boxing. Uh, this name is not known. It's not a household name, but uh, definitely we are going to talk about it. His name is Farouk Abubakar. He's a West African cruiserweight uh, uh, champion. But this time around, he guy is ready to face his uh, um, European opponent uh, uh, by uh, May. That is uh, uh, next month uh, in Germany. Uh, he has has 11 fights to his name with all of those 11 fights uh, getting a knockout in those fights and also uh, his uh, opponent that is Dennis Berge has also fought seven uh, seven times this uh, seven times and seven times uh, in the time past uh, with one knockout to his name but for our own uh, Farouk Abubakar 11 fights 11 knockouts to face uh, Dennis Berge uh, that is uh, for uh, the European uh, debut for this uh, young, uh, fantastic fighter coming out of uh, Nigeria. Omari, are you there? Okay. Uh, we... uh, yes, yes. Okay, we are talking about uh, Farouk Abubakar, who is ready to for his uh, European debut against uh, Dennis Berge. Oh yes, and I think now <laughs> he's another. Sorry, he's, I think it's another start um, of, of another big star coming from Africa. Uh, we've seen boxing has been one of the uh, uh, forte from Africa for a while. We've seen Nigerian um, boxers doing very very well, and I think right now is another way by which should fighting something big. I think eleven um, beating knockout for him is very huge. And um, I, I think I think it's something that I can't really say much about him right now because um, let's see on until until he gets his double so that we don't we don't raise the we, we don't raise we don't raise so much hopes and we get we get disappointed. But the truth of the matter is that well, I'm actually rooting for him and I wish he has all the I wish I wish he has all all the necessary uh, all the vital requirements to compete. In. Um, okay, he's a West African uh, cruiserweight champion from Nigeria, Farouk Abubakar. Let's see how he's going to hold his own against Dennis Berge of Germany at uh, Flessenburg, Germany on the May the 25th. Uh, the venue of that fight is at, at the Forda, uh, Forgy uh, Gymnasium in Flessenburg, uh, Germany. All right, let's uh, leave uh, uh, the boxing world and talk about the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. We cannot stop talking about it and we cannot stop talking about our uh, teams who have already 
already uh, made it uh, to Paris 2024 Olympic Games. And we will be looking at the Super Falcons where the NFF president has actually come out to throw his weight, his support behind the uh, uh, Super Falcons to do well uh, in, the, uh, in the Paris women's football event. That is the 2024 Paris Games. We know that the Super Falcons qualified at the expense of the Bayana Bayana of South Africa after a 1-0 aggregate uh, score line. Uh, the first leg here in Abuja was 1-0 against the South African ladies and the return leg at Pretoria, uh, precisely a week later, it was uh, a goalless draw and that uh, gave us the qualification ticket to represent Africa when it comes to the women's football at the Paris game in France. But this time around, the NFF president said they are going to do everything within their power to see that the Super Falcons at least do well uh, in Paris 2024 Olympic uh, women's football. And you know, the group we are drawn in, Group C, where we have Spain, world champion Brazil, we have Japan, and then Nigeria. He said we can make it out of that group. Uh, Omoni, I don't know if definitely from what the NFF president is saying, because uh, Randy Wardrum himself, knows that we are in a very tough group. Um, actually, what you, what you heard the NFL president to say is to, is to throw his weight around the ladies, uh, support them. Uh, and I think what I, I am very much not oblivion of the fact that uh, in the top side, he's just, he's, he's just more of an encouragement, trying to motivate you guys have broken trial barriers, and this time this should not be the this should, this should be different. This should be something that you should you know, are capable of, uh, of doing. So I think right now everyone knows that Nigeria is a very tough, um, tough to make during the Olympics. But we we just trust that okay, we can actually make surprises. We we did it during the, the women's World Cup, and then we can actually make that again this time. So. There's nothing that is that is on that is on that is unbeaten. Any team can be beat. Anything. We've seen that. There's no size. Central African Republic defeated Nigeria for one point. Nigeria, I would not fall. So if Nigeria go ahead to defeat top brainers in football, nothing is going to happen. We just need to add more feathers to our cap. So so <laughs> So I, I, nothing is going to happen too. So I understand that they need more patient and encouragement right now than letting them know. It's not like right now you are sick and you go to the hospital. The doctor is not going to affirm that you are sick or try to, like I mean, affirm is going to keep saying that, okay, you are sick, you're sick. He's going to tell you that you're going to be well yes. because he wants to be, to, to be, I want to think positively. And I think that's one thing that um, the NFL president will. He wants the ladies to keep taking, to keep having something positive about them, which is possible. So it works because the right frame of mind is going to help them to turn in their energy right now. All right, that's the good one for the Super Falcons. They are going to draw the inspiration for what they did at the World Cup against the likes of Australia, the host country which we defeated, and two draws against uh, Canada at the New Zealand-Australia uh, World Cup. Uh, that was last year. And at this time around, uh, at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, they can just get inspiration from what they did in the last World Cup uh, against the likes of Spain, Brazil, and Japan in Group C. But for the Super Falcons, they can also hold their own. Uh, to be nine times African champions is not a fluke. All right, let's uh, leave that story quickly. Uh, we will come back to this. But let's uh, go straight to Europe. There are games that will be coming up tonight. Uh, we have games uh, tonight uh, in the top uh, five league in EPL. Uh, we also have a cup game uh, in the, uh, that is Italian Copa. But we have one uh, fixed up. But let's look at games that will be coming up uh, tonight in the uh, European leagues. We have Wolves against uh, Bournemouth. Crystal Palace will play uh, Newcastle United. Everton, who are struggling, is a messy side derby against Liverpool. Manchester United at Old Trafford will play Sheffield United. And then in French Ligon, Lorient will take on table toppers Paris Saint-Germain. Marseille play Nice and Monaco will battle Los Lee. Uh, Omoni games will be coming up tonight and uh, one game that Everybody will be looking at is the Messi side derby. That is uh, uh, Everton against uh, Liverpool, which is going to be a cracker. Liverpool is also uh, in the mix of uh, chasing for the English uh, Premier League uh, title. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, I, I know the Liverpoolers, that side is actually fighting. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't really, I don't really think they're really fighting. They missed it already. Right now, I, I think the fight is between maybe Man City and Aston. And it's not really a real fight because Aston has really missed it too. So he uh, does like, okay, we're just fighting. They're just going to play for the ball. It's a derby game, and both sides they are really going to. Uh, they are both sides are really going to, to look at their strengths. And everything I've been, they've never been relegated in APO. and they need the game mostly because so that to avoid any relegation scare. So I think the game now is more more particular for Everton than than Liverpool. Okay. I think I Everton that. needs all they can, needs all the three points, and it need a point in this game against their neighbours, against their rival Liverpool tonight. And for Manchester United, after that woeful performance, despite they, uh, they, they, they made it through to the final of the FA Cup, they will be at Old Trafford to play Sheffield United, another team that is rooted at the bottom of the English Premier League table. So if, uh, if everything goes by tonight, let's see, the, the, the Messi side derby is the biggest game tonight in the English Premier League and for PSG, they will hope to extend their lead against uh, Laurent and when they face off uh, tonight in French uh, Ligue 1. All right, let's uh, leave uh, us uh, uh, in the fixtures for tonight and look at a cup game. It is the semi final uh, game, second leg uh, in, the, in Italy, that is Italia Coppa Atlanta Bergamo. Uh, tonight will be playing uh, the second leg of the Italia Coppa semi final fixture against uh, Fiorentina. And for Atlanta, we know that at Demola Lukma has been doing well on that under Gasparini, who is the coach of uh, Atlanta. Uh, Money quickly for Atlanta. This season they've not really uh, shown what uh, that uh, that grit they, that they showed last season. But this time around, they are in the semi-final uh, game, uh, the second leg against Fiorentina. And whoever wins tonight, uh, Atlanta leads the first leg uh, um, that is, uh, favors them. But tonight, one team will join Juventus, who have already made it to the final, uh, wait, as in waiting for any of them between Atlanta and Fiorentina tonight. Uh, what do you see of this game? I got Atlanta. They've made a lot of investment outside the league. And investments are in Europa League. And in the Copa Italia. And I think that investment is really, really, really affecting the performance in the Italian scene. Okay, for example, now they, they, are, set, they are about 70% certain that, um, certainty that they are going to move to the farm. They're playing against Juventus. Juventus, too, they are not really, they are not really, really a very tough talk at the moment right now. They are just a bit, you know. And now with the Europa, where they are also in the uh, semi finals too, as well, too. So it's something that and that's another, another plus for them. So they have, they'll be looking at okay, they'll be weighing the options to invest heavily into these two teams so that they get a chance to play in the continental uh, next season, too. Because it seems the fact that the league now look a, look a little bit uh, dicey for them, they, they, they are not really very, in a very better shape, but it's a, they have a better chance of winning at least a team this season if they put a lot of energy into the ones they are part. Yes, of course, they have at least one last chance, at least a chance this season to win one trophy. They are still in the Europa Cup, they are in the semi-final, and they will be playing the Coppa Italia semi-final second leg tonight. All right, let's quickly take just a run over these two transfer on the show this evening. Before we go, uh, let's look at this. Arsenal, Manchester City, uh, they are, in, in fact, heading head-to-head you know, head keen on Newcastle United player uh, Bruno uh, Gumarej. Uh, they really want this guy. He's a midfield that are placed for Newcastle United and uh, Arsenal and uh, Manchester City are keen on him to see if they can get him uh, to their sides. All right, let's uh, take this second one uh, quickly. The last one on the show this evening before we go. Where Real Madrid uh, ready to extend uh, Lucas Vasquez's uh, contract. This guy started as a winger for Real Madrid, but now he played at the right wing back. All right, that is where we'll be leaving it on the show this evening. Thanks, Jeremiah Money from Mikiti for joining on the show this evening again. You did a wonderful job. And that is it. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. Say thanks for watching.